The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is The Chris Abraham Show, Season 6, Episode uh, 20. Bente, Van, Wow. And uh, it is the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday. And I'll tell you, I had a great time at uh, Shea DC Girl and Shea Roger Roundy. I got to hang out with uh, uh, fancy rich Asians and I got to hang out with all kinds of fun. It was good. And the best news, the, the worst news is that apparently I'm AFib guy. And the best news is that I didn't get any AFib, even though I indulged. I had maybe two glasses of wine, red wine, and I had turkey and stuffing and uh, Brussels sprouts and asparagus and uh, potato salad and uh, yams with, with, with marshmallows and uh, lots of gravy and all that fun stuff and had uh, a latticed apple pie. And I had homemade vanilla ice cream, and I had uh, pumpkin pie, and uh, then I had uh, two cups of black coffee, and I didn't have any AFib. Beautiful sinus rhythm. A little bit, little bit higher, but I'm not complaining. The way I can always tell is if uh, Fitbit is able to track the cycles on my sleeping and it said that only 8% of my sleep was under my resting heart rate. So I'm not going to complain. Usually after any type of indulgence like that, especially at night, I go into tachycardia. The tachycardia uh, collapses into AFib and it's, uh, it's a pain in my ass. So thank you, Jesus. I appreciate that. Uh, what else? So I was thinking about um, what's happening in the what everybody's calling the alt-right debacle, the fact that all these previously leftist socialist states such as Holland and, uh, and Argentina and even the United States and etc., I want to address the fact that you're all confused, right? So what you call right-wing isn't right-wing at all. It is populist and if you don't understand populism, then you are going to get bit on the butt about it because uh, the left and right populists, the extreme left and extreme right populists agree on abortion. They're, they're fine with abortion. Most of them have a really deep vein, a deep thrombosis of libertarianism where you do you as long as it doesn't touch me. You can be, as long as you're acting out, as long as you're uh, imagination, as long as your exploration of self doesn't become an exploration of me, or if you don't like the way I look at you, when you behave that way, if I back off, or if I close the door on you, or if I call the cops, or if I do any number of things, if I make a decision based on how you make me feel, and you expect me to act a certain way, and you expect the state to enforce your not right to exist, but your right to not be discriminated against, then I think that's where the whole rightist thing. I think if you don't like what is called liberal theatrical behavior, you are defined as a racist and a right winger and etc. Uh, but that's not what's happening. That's why extreme leftists like uh, Jimmy Dore and even uh, Tim Pool. And, of course, Russell Brand and uh, Bobby Kennedy, Bobby K. Jr., and um, et cetera. Like, all these, um, what's her name, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, and uh, they're all progressive leftists. Uh, but what they have is they have a populism. And, and I, I keep on saying this, but I don't know if people, like, care, but the biggest manifestation of this being successful is the marriage of uh, of, of uh, the uh, Sagar, Sag, Sagar, Sagar, and uh, Crystal Ball on breaking points, right? So 
Sagar is conservative, but he's actually a populist. Um, Crystal is a progressive, like a Bernie progressive, but what she actually is is a populist. And I can't tell you, if you watch them on video, I mostly listen to them on podcasts, but when you watch them on video, during their soliloquies, they each and every episode have a uh, soliloquy. Um, the other's head is always bobbing and bobbing and bobbing and bobbing, and they never get into a complete petty fight. The petty fight is always about the establishment, which I define as neocon neolibs, but I also define as war pigs and capitalist pigs. So the neocons might have the leftover stink of Christo fascism vis-a-vis Michael Pence, Mike Pence, who is decidedly pro-life and anti-abortion. I'm pro-life, but I'm not anti-abortion. I think everybody can do whatever they want with their body as long as it doesn't uh, directly affect me. So if you define your embryo as a clump of cells that you consider to be a cancerous imposition into your life, you do you, man. Like, I'm not going to say anything about sin, but let's say sin lowercase s is doing a bad thing, and I won't even define it as evil. Like, that's on your checkbook. That's on your ledger. That's, you know, a plus and minus in terms of your decisions in life that you need to uh, gladly bear. And if you cannot gladly bear it, then you would have made a different decision. So if you are uh, a humanist and you do not gladly call what's in your belly a baby, and if you do not gladly and excitedly say, I'm pregnant and make that a happy moment where you jump up and down and and uh, and uh, embrace your uh, partner or your parents or your or your friends, and you don't celebrate that, then it's not a baby to you. It is just a clump of cells. And like any procedure, right? You, uh, if you're a cat or your prized dog got all prego from the local tomcat or uh, by the local dingo, and that's your prized dog, and you found out that she is pregnant, you might very well, without any concern at all, take her to the vet and have the pregnancy terminated uh, because you don't want to deal with a whole bunch of babies that are not the breed of choice uh, according to your pure breed, pure blood strategy. You do not want uh, to continue or complete that pregnancy. It has nothing to do with morals or ethics or whatever. It's just it, it, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense according to according to plan. So these decisions, you, you cannot project uh, Christo-fascism or you cannot project anti-abortion or you can't even project any type of belief system onto uh, Trumpers because Trumpers are, you know, if I were to go ahead and just describe them, it's, you know, white trash and White trash, and in many cases, that's a point to pride. White trash gets more uh, abortions than anybody by numbers, not by maybe proportion of like like percentage of people in the race, but I just think by numbers, since you know minority people are still minority, there's still a lot more white folk getting abortions by the numbers than there are, you know, black or Latino or any other kind of Asian, etc. So. So they're, they're, they're on only, like Trumpers are on OnlyFans, Trumpers are doing porn, Trumpers uh, are oftentimes, you know, Satanists, or it's really not kind of a, it's not kind of a moral or ethical thing. It's just, it has a lot to do with the, with the culture war. It has a lot to do with a perceived authoritarianism. It has to do with uh, the the fights that are being fought by peoples who are protected species and protected classes are being fought by uh, by the state instead of by them. That there is all kinds of fingers and thumbs on on the uh, on the balance, uh, and populism also wants uh, the workers to thrive and the people to thrive, and it wants a strong middle class and it wants a a respected working class, and it wants a a, um, a blue-collar 
that is able to uh, feed itself, is able to buy a home, is able to acquire credit, is able to get health care, uh, is able to get a good education and work upwardly mobile, even if that's making another plumber or another woodworker or another carpenter or whatever. It also doesn't want those things to be dirty words and doesn't want, if you're a farmer, doesn't want the only advice that you get is learn to code. I don't know if you've ever uh, taken care of chicken coops, but Python uh, via VI on a Linux box is much different than taking care of animals on a farm. Uh, the only object orientation that uh, chicken coops have is whether the chickens are uh, nesting in the coop or up in a tree and where uh, you need to find the objects known as eggs. And, uh, and so in terms of the political horseshoe, I'm already seeing collaborations. You know how we always talk about, um, what is it, parliamentary representational government where uh, different parties can align in order to get more power? I see an emergent uh, alignment between a nationalist populace populists and socialist populists, uh, progressive, progressive populists. I'm seeing that a lot of them uh, care about their diet, care about their health, don't trust Western medicine, don't trust Western science. I know that people on the extreme left and extreme right in the populist world um, do not generally adopt all Western medicine without thinking. They oftentimes are resistant to things like mandatory vaccinations and other sundry type of things. Um, and as a result, it, uh, they're starting to find that they have a lot more in common, especially the populist part, where uh, you would think that in the past, a traditional Republican would uh, be anti-union. But if you are a nationalist populist, you probably don't care about anything more than having a good job. What you don't like is you don't like uh, the open borders. You don't like uh, the fact that there's not a continuity of culture. You don't like that English isn't uh, the lingua franca. You don't like that um, there is a weight on the balance of access to opportunities. You don't like uh, the fact that uh, America is becoming a refugee nation. Uh, an immigrant nation, a, a, uh, and uh, you don't like the whole concept of nobody is illegal. You don't like being, uh, what is it called, gaslit, that, you know, January 6th was literally worse than 9-11 and Pearl Harbor combined. You, you start to feel gaslit, and that makes it sound, and makes you feel like you're being handled, and everybody hates being handled. I finally came to the conclusion that the reason why I left Abraham Harrison is because I felt like I was constantly being handled. I felt like people weren't talking to me, they weren't communicating me, they were, they were uh, dodging me, they were handling me, they were telling me things I needed to hear, and, uh, and they were not including things that might, if you will, emotionally spike my insulin level. They were, they were giving me pablum to, so as to feed me and to move forward. And once I started realizing that and the checks and balances and the uh, accounting, the ledger didn't work, I started to become paranoid about it, right? And I started to lose trust in the system. In people, the company that I started, the vision that I had, the business model that I brought to the table, all the instruction, all the tactics, all the marketing and so forth, I felt like it was being pulled away from me slowly. And in many ways, I felt like I fell for kind of a baiting. Uh, and uh, I walked away and didn't make any fuss. But, but I lost trust of my own, my own thing. And I didn't think that I, I, I felt like I no longer had uh, my hands on the wheel. Or if I did have my hands on the wheel, it's sort of like that first scene from The Simpsons where, uh, is it Maggie? Maggie thinks that she's, you know, steering the car, but in fact, her mom's right there actually steering the car. All she has is a toy steering wheel and a toy horn. And I felt like I was sort of Maggie, right? I felt like, wait, I don't think that this, uh, 
I don't think that this um, wheel is attached to the rudder. And I don't think this throttle is attached to the motor. So I think that that is sort of the, the, the blowback, uh, the unintended consequences of the losing of trust. Um, the fact that uh, people feel like they're being fed pablum for whatever reason, whether it's uh, they're afraid that the truth will blow back on them, that they're afraid that the truth will result in, in violence. I don't know. It doesn't seem like extremely obvious to me as to, you know, what it all means at the end of the day. Um, but when you don't, when you don't trust, like when you really don't trust the motivation of the people around you and you feel like you're being gaslit or nudged or handled or manipulated or, uh, uh, duh, what is the term? Just, uh, I mean, gaslit is a word for it, but like, if you feel like you are being, uh, disrespected, you'll slowly try to find, uh, allies where you'll find them. And the enemy of your enemy is your, is your, is your friend. And so I really am starting to see that there's like 10 things that the extreme left and extreme right, both populists agree on. And one of them was uh, a fear of the vaccine, a fear of the mRNA. Another of them is uh, uh, freedom, uh, freedom in all things, from freedom of speech to freedom of expression to freedom of religion. Because a lot of the lefties are spiritual, man. A lot of lefties are spiritual. And if you are trying to sell a world that is perfectly humanistic and the only respect that the culture shows is to these primitive animist uh pagan uh polytheistic uh like minority religions for whatever reason they're afraid to cancel them they're afraid to cancel whatever native american animism they're afraid to cancel hawaiian animism they're afraid to cancel you know, nobody says sky daddy. You believe in sky daddy uh, around a Hindu or around a Muslim or around a Taoist or around, you know, uh, I know that uh, Buddhists don't believe in God per se, but they certainly do fetishize Buddha. Um, and reincarnation uh, is defined by the continuity of a soul and through vibrational movements of, of the mortal through the immortal or the immortal through the mortal in a uh, movement towards uh, karmic freedom and reintegration into the other. And that is a version of Sky Daddy. That's a version that, uh, that the moon and the stars and your ancestors, I mean, shit, if you're a humanist, you don't fucking believe in ancestors. You don't believe in praying to your ancestors or worshiping saints or any of that stuff. And, you know, it's fine to call Christians sky daddy lovers, but nobody says that to Jewish folk. And honestly, I don't believe that most Jewish folk who say that they're humanists and don't believe in God and that their Judaism is, is, uh, is, is just cultural. I don't think that if you are willing to commit to the various and sundry rites and prayers and commitments and holidays and holy days, and uh, restrictions and fasts and so forth. If you quack like a duck and you eat like a duck and you pray like a duck and you uh, identify as a duck, then you're a duck, even if you just think you're a cultural duck. So I believe that this, if this insult of you believe in Sky Daddy were to be leveled at uh, all these, quote, primitive belief people, uh, it would be shown that there's an extreme amount of hypocrisy and that, um, and that the reason why everybody doesn't call uh, religions outside of Christianity a bunch of mental illness like they do Christians, it would just be not PC. It would be not PC to say, um, all y'all believe in Sky Daddy, y'all believe in ghosts, y'all believe in, in bullshit, y'all being manipulated by, by a bunch of texts written by man, you know. Nobody would visit frickin' Buddha. I mean, sorry, nobody would uh, uh, visit uh, Dalai Lama. Nobody would, would visit Karmapa Lama. Nobody would visit uh, uh, with great admiration the various uh, Hindu monks. 
they uh they feel as charming they 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 look at these things as if they were articles in uh, the national geographic right it's like look at them primitive little motherfuckers oh look at them they believe in oh it's so charming look at that the big gold buddha look at the big gold buddha oh i like the big gold buddha so pretty it's kind of the way that they treat italian spanish and portuguese cathedrals cathedral they treat them as objet d'art right not places of worship that are uh sacramental anyway so that's my warning it is black friday go buy stuff love you happy thanksgiving belated season six episode 20 of the chris abraham show mahalo aloha thank you for listening to the chris abraham show Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.